weighing in at 1,600 pounds, and with a buck-off rate of over 85%, he's one of the greatest bulls in PBR history. Little Yellow Jacket is a fan and cowboy favorite, the ultimate animal athlete. Welcome to Heroes and Legends of the PBR, an exclusive series dedicated to the exceptional riders and bulls that have defined the sport. been breeding bulls for a long time and their bloodlines show it. I've been raising bulls since 1966. I've had a lot of good bulls that became famous and world's champion bucking bulls and I think this bull is better than any of them bulls I've had. Come yellow jacket. Hey, come here boy. Yellow jacket. He was born, I knew he was going to be great. He's uh, not mean. You can walk right in with him, feed him, reach over and pet him if you want to, you know. He knows he's a good bull. He's good every time. He kicks really high out of the chute and spins really fast every time. Look at that bull. He just knows he's a bad dude. When he's in the arena, you don't want to mess with him. I mean, he, he'll run you down. He'll get you. I mean, he'll be, he'd be a bad bull right then. This is a powerful bull. Unbelievable effort. He's the one you want to draw. He'll throw you off, but uh, if you do everything right, you'll ride him and be, be in the 90s. They talked about the red one, the red bull, and the million dollar bull. like him don't come along every day and uh he's just a really good bull and i don't know one of my best friends more heroes and legends of the pbr little yellow jacket when we return hi this is ty murray and you're watching heroes and legends of the pbr little yellow jacket not only is he one of the greatest of all time he's one of the smartest of all time a pirouette through the air, and Little Yellow Jacket takes a bow after getting the award. I am so good. I mean, I am such a stud. Who's your daddy? He has a personality. He knows when he's performing. Around to the left, uh -oh. away uh -oh. from his head. Brendan has a seat. Does he do it? Little Yellow Jacket is just a yellow bull that has real funky horns that bucks harder than any bull there is out there. He's so great for so many reasons. He's strong, he's fast, he's athletic. He doesn't have a pattern. He goes off the feel of the rider. Look what he's going to go, fake left. This bull knows exactly what these guys are thinking. He's, he feels Mike Lee on his back and then moves where Mike Lee isn't. Can't get any better than that. Little Yellow Jacket became PBR's first bull to win three PBR World Champion Bull titles. That's just a bull that doesn't have off days. You know, every time they've rode him, he's, he's a buck. Uh, little Yellow Jacket, he's uh, very, very smart. Well, the great bulls today, I think what separates them from just your long round bulls is, is number one, heart. And uh, they just seem to figure out what these riders, uh, if they're leaning in one way, they'll go the other. They just get smart.
Some of the highest scores in PBR history have come on this great bull. And with a buck-off rate of over 85%, Little Yellow Jacket brought it every night. And everyone recognized this greatness right away. I'd only seen him one time before I chose him to go to the World Finals in 99. Uh, and, and the first time he was out, Ty Murray drew him, and he hadn't been ridden in his career, but he hadn't had very many outs in his career. He's a three-year-old bull. I rode a little yellow jacket when he first came around at the PBR World Final. And I remember when the whistle blew and I and when the whistle blew I had all I could I had all I could take. It was a good thing that the eight seconds came when it did. And I remember I, I was walking past Cody Lambert as I was walking out of the arena and I looked at him and I said, that bull right there is the real deal. I felt lucky to ride him at that point. I thought he was the greatest bull that I got on at the PBR finals that year. What's so great about Ty Murray, you know, you can go ask him what bull he's got tonight and he can't tell you. And you say, have you been on him? He said, I don't know. You know, he doesn't want to know and he doesn't care. You know, his approach, which is different than mine and probably Donnie's, it, it, he just gets on and rides. And this bull, as you see in the replay, he starts left and just fakes left, fakes right. And once he finds a spot, this bull gets it on to the right, into Ty's riding hand. But there's not a guy that, that you know, is any, any better. The second man ever to ride Little Yellow Jacket was 1996 world champion Owen Washburn, a rider known for his back-to-back -back rides. The year was 2000, the city, Portland, Oregon. It was here that Owen Washburn rode Little Yellow Jacket for a score of 87 points. And this bull was the ultimate package with speed, strength, and smarts. You've heard me talk about him, and he, he little old skinny thing, and he can ride Nevada Burgers Bull, and he's a good and gonna go to the right into his hand. Come on, Jason, out of boy, you got over there, round the corner. What a good yeah. bull ride going here, out of boy, Jason. Oh, baby. Oh, and he rode all three. Little Yellow Jacket's secret is he leans in the chute, um, towards the back of the chute and uh, beats everyone out of there. And when he hits the ground, he bounces back towards you and then starts spinning it up. That's his trick. So if you can get, uh, if you can work his trick out, there's not too much trouble to him. Brendan has a seat. Does he do it? First man since Gaffney to ride Yellow Jacket. <laughs> he sticks it on him. I, hey, I got lucky he called it right. But uh, we talked about momentum for this guy. <laughs> how, how, how great and how happy he must feel right now. First time he ever bucked him, he bucked like he, like he's an older bull, like he knew what he was doing the whole time. I mean, without ever doing it before. He bucked like he's been out 30 times, like an old pro. And then we bucked him at another deal, and he'd done the same thing. And the third trip, he's ever bucked with a PBR, Billings. He was a star then. When Nevada first brought him out, he looked like a little calf. He was a little guy, and he bucked hard in the shoot too. Well, I know Little Yellow Jacket since he was a calf. I'm one of the first guys to get on him. He was just a little bitty, pretty good-looking bull, and uh, and we saw that he had the potential, but he wasn't that rank. Hey, Adriano got beat around the corner and bucked him off, and I'd have lost a house on that. And then maybe six months after that, he grew up and he, you no, know, he got it going, and he was rank. More heroes and legends of the PBR, Little Yellow Jacket, when we return. Hi there, I'm Adriana Moraes, and you're watching Heroes and Legends of the PBR. Little Yellow Jacket. Most riders will never know what it's like to spend eight seconds on the back of this bull. But for the few, like Jesse Shellhammer out of Ford, Kansas, who scored an impressive 92 points in Fort Worth, Texas in 2001, that victory will always be sweet. Okay, guys. Here we go. Right on the money. To the left. Shellhammer. Yeah. Right on. Go ahead. Let's ride one. Yeah. Come on now. Good job. Great job. 90-something. Yeah. And then, in 2002, Portland, Oregon, Jim the Razor Sharp from Stephenville, Texas, scored an impressive 93.5 on Little Yellow Jacket. Jim Sharp may ride the reserve world champion bull, and he has done it. To the delight of the fans at the Rose Garden, Joe Baumgartner 
takes a hit. Jim Sharp gets to his feet. He stays, but more than that, he's dazzled the fans of the Rose Guard with a spectacular ride on one of the toughest bulls in the sport. He took a pretty good shot getting off, and you can see it. The good thing is that some of that dirt from the arena covered up that bald spot. To get by a bull of that caliber and, and uh, uh, that much athletic ability is, is an honor. Yeah. Can he do it again? Oh, yeah. He's right, he's got got champion bull. Come on, Corey. Come on, Corey. Yeah, hey, hey. I think Corey Mack has little Yellow Jacket's number away from his hand. Great, great bull ride. Corey McFadden would hold the highest score on Little Yellow Jacket for two years. Until 2004 in Nampa, Idaho. The night that Michael Gaffney rode him in Nampa, I, I visited with Michael and he had just bucked off of him and I was trying to give him, tell Michael what I thought, you know, what I thought, you know, how I would go about riding him. And, and I don't know that Michael listened to me, but uh, the things that he did that night were the, some of the things that uh, that I thought I would have done if I, you know, if I had had to try and ride him. Oh, he's got a seat. To the right, he's into his seat. hand. It's an off night for Little Yellow Jacket, and a he's huge got a night for Michael Gaffney. Gaffney. Oh, man, Let Michael back. Gaffney has Let done it. Gaffney three times has had that ball. He had him last week at Colorado Springs and bucked him off. He's never ridden that ball. Nobody has ridden this bull this season. It was long in coming, I'll tell you that. I'd had him the weekend before in Colorado Springs. I think that was probably maybe trip number five. And then uh, to have him again the very next weekend in Nampa, I was like, hey, what is, what's going on here? This is, this is we're just uh, meant for each other, I guess. And, uh, and I changed some things up. I talked to some of my friends on how to approach it. So the next weekend, I was really at ease about having him. I was like, I was almost disgusted. I thought, you know what, this is my turn. He went out and he didn't do the hop and skip that I'd not made so many times before. He went into the right hand spin and, and from there, it was just a, kind of a smooth sailing. And it just, that's what you live for. I mean, that's what you ride bulls for. Hands down, the best bull the PBR has seen in years. People don't want to get on him. Michael Gaffney not only wanted to, but stuck it on him. Jody Newberry put up a score of 94.5 at the 2003 PBR World Finals. Newberry is oh so close. He may have made the eight second whistle top. It's gonna be really, really close. They're gonna have to go back to the, to the replay to see if, if in fact he did it. He thinks he did it. Everybody's standing on their feet. Kid by the name of Corey McFadden wrote him several times and he had him, uh, uh, he had him figured out. Well, the first time I had Little Yellow Jacket was in Billings, and I uh, was uh, lucky enough to get by him. And then again in the finals, he had basically the same trip with me. He spun right there to the left, and uh, just bucks hard all the way to the whistle. 94 and a half, if he rides him, he will be big, big points. And Corey McFadden could go all the way. John Willingham on the bucking bull of the year. That is Little Yellow Jacket. Sean Willingham wasn't on him long enough to get his name. And for every great ride that made the highlight reel, there were many other rides that didn't turn out quite so well. The best time to get to watch Little Yellow Jacket is the week after somebody's finally conquered him and ridden him because he always comes back even stronger. He's gone. Little Yellow Jacket does it again. Just a great, great bull. And Craig Saucy had, had him one time before. He pulls him down and just slaps him right out of there. He hits him in the, it looks like he hit him right there in the mouth the first time. Might have hit him twice. So he pulls him down right there once, twice, you're out of here. More heroes and legends of the PBR. Little Yellow Jacket, when we return. I'm Michael Gaffney, and you're watching Heroes and Legends of the PBR. 
Little Yellow Jacket. Little Yellow Jacket up until Bushwhacker was probably considered the greatest bull of all time, three-time world champion. Man, he was hauled all across the country, did it year in, year out, and at the time there was nothing, anybody, any, nowhere anybody any better than him. I had him again in our world finals in 2004 and was my last bull in competition, or last bull for, for that matter, ever, and I retired. You couldn't ask for anything better than this. Michael Gaffney oh, yeah. leans forward. He knows what's at stake. Here comes Gaffney on the world champion little yellow jacket, who's been ridden two years in a row at the Las Vegas finals. Ladies and gentlemen, the oldest man at the PBR, 34-year-old Michael Gaffney, has just ridden the world champion bull, little yellow jacket. Tom Teague, Bernie Toppin, and Burgers, three-time oh, world champion Gaffney. Gaffney does it. Unbelievable feat. He not only rides him, he rides him perfectly. Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, no problem. Listen to this crowd as he has just scored a 93 for Michael Gaffney. The former world champion rides the world champion bull. The 35-year-old brings this crowd to its feet. Yeah, I drew Little Yellow Jacket in the short round in Billings. At first, that wasn't really the bull I would have picked. A little intimidating. I just made a decision to get on that bull and not let his name buck me off and let, you know, see what happens. I remember being in Colorado Springs on, on a million dollar Sunday in 2003 in April. Uh, as far as we were concerned, the energy level inside of that building, everything was, it was incredible. I mean, never felt anything like it at any Western sport. Uh, one man, one bull, two greats, going at it for a million bucks. Four times before the bull has bucked him off. It's one million dollars. He's trying to get the bull to get off of the gate. He doesn't want to give the bull any advantage. He's leaned forward enough that he know he's ready. He opens the gate. Can he ride for it? No! He hit his head as he came out. Chris Shivers hit his head on Little Yellow Jacket. He physically is getting a standing ovation. When you're getting on a bull, like Little Yellow Jacket, it's always a toss-up, whether whether you win or you lose. And, but I had deep down in my mind that I was going to win, and the bull just, it seemed like he knew who was on his back and what, what it was for. It was like that bull could feel what we felt. Uh, there was an energy level in there. When that gate cracked, I mean, that bull was incredible. And I realized right then that this was one of the greatest bulls I was ever going to see in my entire life. A million dollars on the line. Facing a great bull like Little Yellow Jacket, there's a, there's a lot of pressure and a lot of a lot of media and a lot of people telling you what you can and can't do and and uh, I think I learned a big lesson from from that. I remember one time this guy Brian from Florida he jerked him down and knocked him out and he was kind of right in front of the out gate and he was still spinning and I just kind of got down between them and Little Yellow Jacket could have hit me you know he could have really hit me hard and tried to hurt us, but he just kind of nudged me and then backed off, you know, he didn't he didn't try to hurt us, you know, and I always thought that was kind of cool. You look back at great bulls that you feel like understood the game, and he's one of those that you feel like understood the game. All these great bulls that we're talking about, they've got their little signature things that make them a little trickier. You know, Little Yellow Jackets was a skipping and bouncing on its front end with continued for forward movement. It would always mess up your timing and get you back a little bit and he never slowed down and you know that that those skipping and bouncing and, and changes of rhythm and timing that's what makes them very hard because that's what this sport comes down to is rhythm and timing and you're trying to you're trying to time out counter moves and when they start messing up the timing the way these great bulls do that, that's where it gets tricky a little yellow jacket uh, is one of my favorite bulls of all time i mean uh, you know we're talking 40, 40 years now, and uh, he was unbelievably uh, uh, one of the biggest hearts of any bull that I've ever seen. He's probably one of the greatest bulls that I've ever seen or ever heard about. No yellow jacket's as special as any bull that's ever been. No bull should have held up the way he has because he grew up in the PBL. He's, he's challenged harder than, than probably any bull in the history has been coast to coast, border to border. And on these bad days, you're in 94 of them, if you can ride him. And on these good days, you know, we don't know how many they would be on. 
decided that after this year, he should just retire as a champion. At the end of his career, Little Yellow Jacket had an average buck-off time of 2.6 seconds and earned his place in PBR history. Before his passing, he was scheduled to be the inaugural inductee into the PBR's brand of honor and was honored in a ceremony at the 2011 PBR World Finals. Little Yellow Jacket passed away in September of 2011 in Graham, North Carolina at the age of 15. From the most humble beginnings came one of the greatest bulls ever seen. A bull with an extraordinary bloodline, a rare and nimble beast, an animal of extraordinary power, power of mind, and body.